Um, See, that's what I was gonna say about if I had money, Detroit would be the place where I'd be buying property. Right. I mean, there's some really, really nice places. Baker's keep work. Oh, yeah. That's so what I'm she, saying. Her parents met there, fell in love there, and uh-huh. she wants to do this documentary and kind of compare like this seventy five year old old school jazz club that like people still go to even though it's in a scary part of town or yeah, whatever. Yeah. To vibrato and like a famous jazz musician owning it and um how they're really so nice different but still the same. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. how jazz is kind of a lost Yeah. You know, kind of lost Art form. There. Yeah. Exactly. Really. Well, you know, I love any horn. There's I a kid standing on the there's a kid standing on with a with a, a, a <laughs> trombone case. <clears throat> and I wanted to yell out the window, nice job kid, but he's think I was some kind of perv. But you know, I love the saxophone. Love. My niece it. plays the saxophone. Really? The in the school but rock I, or whatever. Yeah. And she's like teeny tiny. Like that chick playing like, the sax is so sexy. Yeah. And, sure. and the trumpet. Do you have ear play? No, I just have an ear for that. My sister. Uh, I, I do. I remember when I was a little but kid. But I like a big trombone. She uh, <laughs> tell me about it. Um, she had played the trumpet, Sorry, and and my yeah. and uh, our beagle would just go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> my mother would be like smoking her benson and she going, please God, let this stop. <laughs> Big old, what I would sound like if I was playing the trombone. I'd be like, <laughs> and the more, oh, are you having a hot flash? Yeah, I'm always hot. <laughs> All right, you know, you we're uh, we're today? good. Whenever you're ready. You get, mm. Oh, okay. Um, are, are we have we started? Uh, no, we're just good whenever you're ready. Peppermint oil, roll it on your neck, get it from Whole Foods. It cools you off. Would, really? Peppermint oil. Because you're on your rest and no, because peppermint oil I is like a peppermint. It's a cooling agent, I guess. So you just roll it on. You get the rolls and you roll it on your neck. Oh. Or Tina Jones. I'm totally gonna neck for my friend well, who keeps buying those start. necklaces for um, hot flashes. Oh, I don't know about those. Oh, but they're like you store in the freezer. They're like these. Oh, like a baby, like the baby chew. Yeah. Well, now you know the, the 30 extra pounds and, and the, the body hair doesn't really help. You need to go to my website, please, because the pic, still picture of me in the speedo. Yeah. Oh, no. oh are we? Are we? That might just. Fuck yeah, me we're. Guys, <laughs> well, no, listen. It's, 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 the commercial. I did a commercial at the stall day. house up in uh, the hills, and it was for this advertising agency. And there's like these 10 lovely young women. It's supposed to be a European country club, so they're all dolled up with big hair and diamonds laying around by the pool and yeah. these bikinis drinking champagne uh-huh. and I come out in this t- big terry cloth robe and I drop the robe and I'm in this, uh, this orange speedo that's purposely too tight with a spray tan <laughs> and there's no dialogue it's just this great jazz music what's your website and it's actually an award winning oh. commercial uh, Bob the Surly comic dot com. Oh, that's a lot. Can you text it to me? Oh, yes, that's dear. A lot. It's on the paper card. We don't have uh, time for that. We're ADD. I'm now, exactly. ADD. Hello. You're going to fit right in with me. Like, like, how do I so that? All right. So I guess uh, uh, live from the fabulous Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California, it's the Bob Bean Show. Yay. Yay. Um, hello, everybody out there in podcast land. Thank you for joining us again. Katie, I don't even know your last name. Macintosh. Katie Macintosh is joining us. She's a new friend who I just met on the street along with the lovely Eden Albert. <laughs> Hello. Dennis Olson is with us today. Kathy St. George is still in the Bahamas. You bitch, getting a beautiful suntan. <laughs> Sammy Jr. is here today. I want to say hi to Zach Herndon in, in uh, Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana. Hey, Zach. He's hey, our Zach. Crew. And uh, as I say every week, I do not endorse Wells Fargo Home Mortgage because they're crooks, nor do I endorse Power Urology. Doctors are great, but the billing department is fucked uh, up. Pardon my language. Boom. Oh. Boom. Thank you. Pardon my language. Now, we didn't get a chance. Uh, we just talked about anything and everything. Uh, I did a comedy union two weeks ago Friday. It was a great show. Thanks for those that made it out. I don't have anything scheduled upcoming. You got uh, a fight last night? Night before. Night before. If anybody's noticed, I'm going to, you know. I was, I was, I was really embarrassed. Right I didn't want to say anything I mean, about it. I mean, if you want, I wouldn't please. be ashamed. I said, you look like the winner, winner chicken yeah. dinner. Well, winner, winner chicken dinner because I kicked him in the huevos and we ran. <laughs> That's kind of He funny, started right? it, though. He started it. I got a wise man. Oh, my God. I hope well, you didn't yeah. this. We ran it. You <laughs> guys no. limped. You limped ran. We, we got in my classy <laughs> little convertible. We, we got in my classy <laughs> little convertible. The guy was still going, you yeah, uh, I would run. I was like, yeah. We just drove away. Wow, bitches. So that's what happened. It was after... Uh, uh, Melanie Bruno's fabulous party. Thank you, Melanie and Jerry. You're always a awesome. uh, quintessential host and hostess and beautiful home. I was sitting in the back first time I was there, and I go, wow, your neighbor's house is really close. And she's like, um, that's the guest house. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Dingy bachelor pad is rent controlled on Stoner Avenue, but you know, that <laughs> blast me out of there. Of course you live on Stoner Avenue. Okay, so <laughs> Eden Albert is my good friend. She has the club vibrato. Yay. It is the jazz club in all of Southern California. It's up at the top of Beverly Glen. 
beautiful club. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We've been good friends for a while. Finally. And Katie <laughs> is a, what you are a... I'm a casting director. So I work in TV and I uh, cast a lot of the ch shows you've seen out there and continue to do so. But it's led me to show development where I can find new talent and develop shows around them. Glad we've met. Thank I'm you. so glad you. your office is directly across the street or on Sunset Boulevard and you and Eden are old friends. Mm -hmm. Do you know Barbie Kligman by any chance? I don't. But that doesn't mean anything I don't know. She, she, and her husband, <laughs> she and her husband Billy Malone have been guests on the Bob Dean Show. Yay! Yay. And uh, just Google her. She's a lovely, lovely gal and I'd love for you guys to meet sometime. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's You're big with things. Oh, Listen, you I'm telling you, I, I say this all the time. I'm, I'm such a jerk, but I have such wonderful friends. I've never <laughs> seen the jerk side. You will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna see the Just ask the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> so Eden Spectrum One, which is a great new yeah. channel. I can't not wait to meet Alison Marino as well. But she did a piece on you and your father, uh, Herb Alpert, who everybody knows that wonderful, man, talented man. But you can uh, you can go probably go back and check it out. But they read it over and over again, and it was just a great piece about the club and you and your family and everything. Tell and us. And the philanthropy too. I just want to. That's what I was gonna say. Please tell us. Thank you. Um, it was a great piece, and, and, you know, it was cute because I called my dad, and 99% of the time he'll say, no, nope, we're not going to do something. But I think because I came at him for the first time and said, we need to do something together. It's our first interview together, and it's Spectrum. I had to explain the Spectrum situation, how you turn your TV on now, and it goes right to Spectrum, mm -hmm. which is pretty freaking cool. At first, I was like, why do I have to watch the news? Exactly. And then I got kind of addicted to it. And um, the producer, um, Steve Lang, and there's another guy, I'm forgetting his name, I'm so sorry. And Allison actually came to me, Allison Martino came to me, and then they came and did a whole big production. I mean, we did one night with James Torme when John James Torme was performing, and then my dad said, yeah, let's do this and have fun. I was like, wow, here's the beautiful part. When we went in, and they were all ready to set up, Dad walks in, and he gets on the piano, which he never does, and starts playing Rise. Just, that's what he was feeling at the moment. Mm -hmm. And it was super cool, and Allison was like, jaw dropped and everyone in there was jaw dropped and steve lang's son was there who um, is a musician and he was i think 16 and just in awe of my father it was really a cool moment it was a very organic interview and then spectrum had me on the news the morning that it was airing to promote it and it's just been it, it it's amazing and to be with allison martino who's grown up in the same situation her father's al martino and just be in the same life that she does vintage LA. Mm -hmm. She's pretty big, you know, she's big on her own, but now her show's like picking up on another level. Well, I've never had the pleasure, but as I said, uh, Wendy Clancy and Ken Kirk. Hi, Wendy Ken, who are gonna be on the Bob Dean Show. Yay! At some point, I'll say, y'all hope you'll join. Because uh, you. You, 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 you'll just love her. She, she's the coolest. Um, but, There's uh, two connections so far. Is anyone, yeah. is there a ticker? Listen to me. If you go back and look at some of my shows, because uh, you'll find out, I'm sure that this, oh, is, our, this is our 73rd <laughs> show, and there's gonna be people on that you've either had a cocktail with or your old friends with Cindy. or something like that. Cindy Bell's been Cindy Bell. Yeah. And what point did the show start having video? And what episode? What? That was uh, like the, the first 50 few, episodes ago? Sam? First sponsor just started like rolling. And then it, it's, yeah, watching yeah, the video. first couple episodes, of course, you know, the first one is flying by the seat of our face. Oh, they're great. Episode, but, uh, where we used to broadcast from the, I have to pull up, plug, uh, the LA School of Comedy, 10835 Santa Monica Boulevard in beautiful Persian Westwood. Owned by Sunda Kroonquist. Oh, I'm sure that's not fair. She... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. You need to look at I love like my person. Sunda, Sunda Kroonquist owns the LA School of Comedy, and she's a big name in, in, in Ace Comedy. She's a black Swedish Jew, and Ooh, she's gorgeous. She has sexy. green eyes. She's from Paston, New Jersey, and her husband. And she's from New Jersey? She's yeah. from New Jersey. But she and her husband, Mark, have, uh, you know, uh, uh, have been together for many, many, many years, and they live in Westwood, and he's a, a, a prominent attorney in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. and, but her, her comedy is hilarious. Wow. It's a dirty, but I like dirty. And she's and great. She's, like, oh, that oh, sick, like, and she's, she's hilarious. We should do a total like reunion of all the guests that you have on. We can have the party across the street at my office. Oh, that's a good idea. Should we do that? Uh, you can do your podcast live from that. Oh, my Same. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Katie. This is the most productive 15 minutes of my life. Seriously, aren't you glad you crossed the street? This is very exciting. That'll be fun as hell. I love it when someone can go, can you come over here? I'm going to do this podcast. want to do it? And she's like, I'm going to put makeup on. I'm like, I have no makeup on. Me too, though. <laughs> is that, you know, being in the bar business in Beverly Hills for so many years, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot, a lot of big name celebrities. I'm one of them, but well, I'm that's not. Right. This is what I was just getting ready to say, and I don't kiss anybody's butt. But you are just, you know, you, 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 your father is hugely famous, and you and your club, you know, and that sort of thing. But you're just such a cool gal. You know, there's not a pretentious, but I mean, you know. And you're about, you know, the nasty. I can't say, do you know who I am when something doesn't. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> I, I say it all the time. I'm no, like, yeah, don't I'm you know who I am? And they're like, like ah, yes. 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 Okay, wait. Yep. I'm kidding. How long have you guys been friends? 
God. Quite a while. Weird, I don't I don't even know, know how you know, so we met through two different groups of people. So we've known each other quite a, a bit. But we got close, I'm going to say, about six years ago. Yeah, six six years old, so. Seven yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. before she got married. We had so many mutual friends that we didn't even know about. Yeah, but we're just crazy together. You yeah. know, it's just it's it's toxic, just... good toxic. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You can tell from the minute she was at my wedding. Talking. Yeah, oh, I was at the wedding. Yeah. And, and her husband was dancing with my 23 year old daughter. Recently, right? <laughs> <laughs> then you just got married, what? Uh, in last, October. In October. Yeah. Congratulations. In Burbank, California. My favorite town. Shout out to Murphy. Shout out to Murphy. Murphy. Shout out to 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 Murphy. They almost moved down the street, but it didn't. It was so close. Her, but I, I mean, I'm I couldn't trying to get her up there. So really It'll happen. Like yeah, Will yeah, and Betty. Be. It's so easy to get here, like um, just taking my whole. You got a pool. Got a pool. Got a big. Uh, you better give me that damn date, girl. Exactly I got a jacuzzi that my dad, my husband said, if they're Asian, so sorry. Oh we my could God. get twenty of you in there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I love everyone, so I know you know that wasn't very nice. Please. Tinier than us. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, now, how old is the house? The house is from 1957. Oh, and how then, cool. But we went in and did an overhaul. We, I mean, well, it was sure. gorgeous before the yeah. reno. So, I mean, but wait till you see it now. All new floors, well, that neighborhood all new is so shopping. awesome, too. An I mean, acre of property, indoor, outdoor stop, living. Stop, an right. acre? You must be loaded, <laughs> with all due respect. Think of what she could afford in Detroit. <laughs> well, I mean, and exactly. LA, it's just because LA real estate that you were discussing is just so outrageous. But that, congratulations Thank to you. you. We're Have very you, happy. I feel. This West Side girl never thought she'd go. To That's what I would ask you. So, what, what now I know you're fine. This is really neat because um, we have had, um, I was telling uh, uh, th- 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 Shell Talme, okay. who uh, is the producer who discovered the Kinks and the Who in London. He's a very, okay. very famous man, but he went to high school with your dad and Phil Spector. Mm-hmm. And Shell was saying that it wasn't Phil Spector that created the wall of sound, it was some other guy that they went to high school with that Mr. Spector kind of stole it from what I Oh, well, so you know, we won't talk about Phil because that's not a good topic to topic, talk about. I will say it's a sore subject sometimes if we come to AM Records back in the course, day. Of course, yeah. Flying his gun around, but I did just say that out loud. But the, the On the Bob Bean show. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is um, Herb <laughs> has done a lot for that school. He, he is put the lights oh. on the fields out there and, and you know he grew up there he grew up in the Fairfax district well that's what I wanted to ask you yeah. so your dad grew up in the Fairfax district mm-hmm. which is gorgeous we're third generation Angelinos and where did you grow up where did you go to high Beverly school Beverly Hills so? High and I grew up in Malibu and Beverly Hills because my parents were divorced and I would go back and forth more to my dad than my mom um, so I grew up in Beverly Hills, and I thought West Side was it for me. But then going up and down Beverly Glen to work every night from Cheviot Hills, which is where I live, um, that was a great became, place. It was too. a great place, but it was two stories. And my daughter graduated, we left for college. I have always wanted one level ranch indoor outdoor living because I'm an inter- I love to entertain. So if this place is five minutes from Vibrato, and it's an acre of property, and it's I, I ripped out every floor, we ripped out every bathroom, we did it, and then took the master down to the studs and redid that. And it's got like a bar outside, a bar inside. Wow. It's just a pool. It's it's. I can't wait to come over. I'll it's bring, a party house. I'll bring my traditional housewarming gift: a cascading, uh, wandering Jew and a bottle of white Zinfandel. <laughs> <laughs> I am there. Okay, Katie. Now, what about you? you? You're from Michigan. Yep, born and raised in Detroit, and then um, and my parents still live there in the same house I grew up in. Ooh. So my best friends to this day still live there in suburban Detroit, at the Farmers and Hills, Birmingham mm. area. Um, and then, are you interested in what I did after that? My sure. Travels? I went to, Tell us um, everything. Let's see. And then I went to school in Pennsylvania at a school no one's ever heard of. Which is? Clarion University. In I've heard of Clarion University. I, I, my, my, I was born in wow. now historic Levittown, Pennsylvania, but oh, I've got yeah. relatives all in the west side in uh, wow. Brownsville all and those Union Town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I was a diver, a springboard diver. In college, no kidding. So that's why that's I went to awesome. college. <laughs> no, I don't have an ass. I don't know where it went. It went in the hot tub with your... <laughs> <laughs> With all those Asians. <laughs> oh, bad. Sammy's giggling. Sorry. I know. Sorry. But, uh, but anyway, long story short, so I went from there to Philadelphia, then New York, and now to LA, and I've been here for ever, it seems. You and know? you're married. I am married. Long story that we don't have time for right now, but yes. But you were mentioning a nanny, so you have children, one, two. And we have one child that She's just beautiful. had a baby a year and whatever, 16. February last year. So oh, congratulations. What date in February? Uh, February 1st. On the 26th. No way. Aquarius. But still, that's great. And your daughter's name is? Scotland. Sc- oh, how lovely. What about your daughter? What's her name? Her name's Kylie. 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 Kylie
Tyler Mary the Breeze. And she's your only child, one girl? One and done. One and done. Uh, you too. Uh, one and done. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she, you that? know what? Four legs are good too. But yeah. I, I got to say, you know, I, I get to focus on one and then there's no competition here. Her dad has three more little girls. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Michigan, total football dude. Oh, shit, know. he's from Michigan, too? He's from Charlevoix. Oh, my God, that's right, because yeah. the other place up in, up north in yeah. Michigan, there's a town called Har- uh, Harbor Springs. Yeah. Um, so we have a lake house up there, which is really near Charlevoix, which is actually an adorable town. Well, Sorry, it's, a, it's, it's, a, guys it's, a, it's a the Jewish resort town from Bloom, mm-hmm. where you're from. Mm-hmm. It, it goes from 2,500 2, population <coughs> to 30,000 in the summer. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's super beautiful. beautiful. Like, beautiful. what is it in New York where all the Jewish people go? Uh, they were just doing it on the Marvelous Mrs. Basil. They, they had it. Uh, uh, oh, they go to the big resorts where they, you know, oh, the name of the resort. Of that well, like, oh, the, uh, the Berkshires. Wait, no, that's, that's, a, a, that's a town, right? Um, I don't know. Can you like tell I'm not a New Yorker? I respect and love them, but I was very uncomfortable in the Hamptons. I felt, wow, I'm super cash. This is I. Uh huh. A little nice over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was beautiful. You know, and I was hanging out with a very famous actor, Alec Baldwin, so I could really go, hey, hey, hey. Ooh, I wanted to marry at one point. Yeah, he's awesome. Me too. But my sister <laughs> did a one-woman show with him. Fell in love with him on Knott's Landing, baby. Oh, my God. I forgot about that show. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm aging. Right oh, now. listen, I just went to the, we went to the cul-de-sac. I found it. It's Where really, is it? It's, it's, um, it's in, uh, Sherman Oaks? <laughs> no, no, it's really easy to find. And it's it hasn't changed at all. I did a little documentary. I've done this. This was the house that Miss Ellie bought for Gary and Valine. And next door, of course, was Karen and yeah, Sid. And Sid who died, and then she married the other guy. Like- and then there was um, uh, what's her name, the redhead, and her husband. And then next to them was the uh, Abby uh, uh, Abby uh, Cunningham Ewing, who what? ruined Val. And then next to them was. Kenny and what's her name, but they were only on for two seasons because they moved to Nashville. Oh it's in the Norwood yeah. States. It's really easy to find. I'm going to drive out there someday. Yeah, I'd love to do that. It's real fun. I don't know if you'd love to do that. You'd and I've had a guy. No, uh, I like that. I like that if we're not like on a set somewhere. I don't yeah. know shit about. I mean, I grew up in Beverly Hills with. With the, with the cars going on Maple Drive. And what the address? What's your social security it, number? Well, no, I mean, I'm just curious <laughs> about, I, I love talking about my friends, but I also love urban development, things like that. Yeah. And you know who else lived, at, at least technically, on Maple Street was Burns and Allen. Oh, really? On uh, the uh, Burns and Allen show, they refer to, you know, they live on Maple Maple Drive. Yeah. No, I like that you get specific, though. I get like that, too. I ask what hospital people will vote. Sure. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, Details I mean, are important. That's why people, my yes. stories are always remember, long. I, we yeah. ended up on Nightmare on Elm Street, which was the uh, next one over, because the Menendez brothers lived down the street from us. Did you they know had, them? They, no. But a lot of people we grew up with did. But we had been robbed two years prior to them killing their parents. And I don't know if you remember this, but the whole story was is they were robbing houses in the valley. Mm-hmm. So um, we had just, it's a long story. To make it short, my stepdad was knocked over the head by the robbers. They tied up the cooks, and they were looking for furs that they heard my mom had, and they stole like a quarter of a million dollars worth of jewelry. And there, everyone was fine, but I was living in Chicago at the time, and I was getting phone calls like, we hope your dad's okay. We heard on the news, and I immediately mm-hmm. go to my dad, not my stepfather. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a pre- and then I'm two sure years it was later, terrifying. the Menendez brothers did that, and it literally they lived the next block down. So they immediately thought it was them uh, for a minute, who, yeah, one. because they were stealing mm-hmm. and, and breaking into homes. Wow. So I call it nightmare on Elm Street, even though it wasn't. Well, you know, Dionne Warwick lived across the street, and her son I was friends with. So. Yeah, you know, it was good stuff. We just watched Clueless the other night. I love I that love movie. I love that movie. And when I I I get, have been hearing about the witch's house for years and years and years. That's my friend Michael LeBeau, who's but an amazing player. I've heard. You of need to get him on here. Uh, please, Michael LeBeau. I've heard wonderful things about the man, he's and great. I've heard about the um. Very talented. I've heard that's what I've heard, but I've heard about the witch's house, and I didn't even put two and two together until she was walking by, and I'm like, holy crap, that's because I've never seen it before. Yeah, well, that's where we all went to. to but I love how she, you know, <laughs> she in the in the beginning when she's narrating, she's like. Uh, my best friend D, we were named after total, uh, total uh, Deb celebrities at the time because she shared her best friend is black and she's Dion. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Now, where do you live? You live in uh, West Hollywood? I live in West Hollywood now, like over by the Pacific Design Center. Oh, yeah. And I love it. I love it. I really, she lives really on do. the street with that. My dad bought his first house on the Yes. Street. What street? Well, uh, Westport, 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 Westport. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, you know, Alicia Ball had her first house in West Hollywood, too. Oh, my God. She's not. I don't know if I knew that. Like, I didn't know that. Shit? I can't. Right, you have to Google it. I was just one of those. You know how you start off, you know, after two more teenies and I've got a half a pack of cigarettes <laughs> and I'll go, I think I want to go to YouTube and look at one video. And the yeah, next thing you know, it's 7 o'clock ball. in the morning and I'm like, why am I listening to Doris Day? But it was one of those deals. You know, and that she... Um, 
And it's really interesting for her too because her brother, I saw this documentary, I think he's probably passed too, but she's from like Jamestown, New York. And you know her, her uh, little brother shot and killed a neighbor boy by an accident. In West Hollywood? No, 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 in, in New York. Wow. But when she moved out here, she was very young and she was like the queen of the B movies before. I Love Lucy, she was in her 40s when she started that. Isn't that right. crazy? Really? Like mm-hmm. how, like now, like I feel like people get famous when they're like teenagers, you know, 14, whatever. And, you know, back in the day, people, nothing happened for a lot of people she until did they the, were over 40. The, this movie that she did with Jimmy Stewart, and I don't remember the name of it, but she plays this, and it, it's just sad. Yeah. It's like a car wreck. I can't think of it. She plays the girlfriend, like, she's a dancer, and she's like the, you know, the, the mob boss is married, but she's like this concubine, and, mm-hmm. and uh, she, something yeah. happens. Is she tall? No. Mm-mm. In my head, she's tall. Maybe, I don't know. But I don't to throw a quick reference because you got to look it up. She, and Jimmy Stewart was like a busboy in this club, and she has an accident. I won't go into the details because you, but she loses her, uh, okay. she becomes paralyzed. Oh. Well, she wants to go to Miami. She wants to go to Miami because she knows she's going to get this mob boss back, and Jimmy Stewart pushes her from New York to Miami in a wooden wheelchair, yeah. and they're like, eh, 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 and they're like with the, with the thing going real slow. <laughs> it is. Bless her heart. I love her. And oh, I, yeah. I think about a stomping grapes when you mention her. Yeah, oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm determined. I don't know why it's a bucket list, but I just want to feel those. Well, you're going to Italy. Well, you're going no, to... I know, but in Murphy's every year they do grape stomp. Okay, but we, yeah, we have yeah. a house there, and I we haven't even back gone to soft grapes yet. Trip. Girl, yeah, we need to get you up toes in those grapes. I know, I want to feel that. <laughs> and I know, and we would have bought a bunch of grapes and a big old... How fun would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. But West Hollywood is awesome. I love it there. There's so much to do. It's very convenient to everything. Well, so see, you can walk, too. Everything. The nail salon, the tanning salon, dry cleaners, West Hollywood bars, is a restaurants. pain in the ass if you're coming from, like, uh, I'm up Santa Monica for the address, but we're right mm-hmm. where Brentwood and Santa Monica mm-hmm. come together. Mm-hmm. Right, where Wilshire is a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. You go area. anywhere, like the yeah. neighborhood where we... It, it's, up as soon as you get to like Century City, like forget yeah. it. You well, know? it's actually... Even actually before that, because Beverly Glen is kind of where the shit show starts now. Well, oh, you know, exactly. it really starts with Wilshire and the 405, or the 405 start, mm-hmm. you know, right by the veteran. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's uh, what I'm saying. That's, that's where I got all twisted yeah. up the last time we were supposed to do the show. And the lights don't sync up no, with the ones they don't. going through right downtown Westwood, like yeah. through Westwood Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And I said that uh, we were in the car the other day, and I was bitching and bitching, and I'm not a... You? Oh, yeah. You're and not then a he said bitch? something, and I go, <laughs> I go, I go, if you don't fucking like the way I drive, then don't ride with me and he was so offended and I go and if you don't believe that I tell that to every friend that's a blind our friend Shirley she's been uh-huh. blind since birth okay <laughs> and, and we've been friends blind for many many years Shirley. and we read so, you know read all that but she's a UCLA she's a brilliant woman and she can get anywhere in Los Angeles with her guide dog uh-huh. and um but that's she cool. and, you know let's drive around forever and she'd be like you're gonna get a shot and I'm like if you don't like it then get out oh I kind of yeah. say that to my husband well, that's why I still have my 1991 Buick Dude, Roadmaster like, station wagon with the wood sides. It's all beat up because it's very it's, threatening. I mean, it's a cool car. Me too. We have so oh, much in common, oh, girl. Do you know, shot. I always tell this story about your dad uh, when I was a kid. I'm 58. <laughs> I'm 53, and this is me. Well, what I'm saying, I was telling the story about I, my fondest childhood memories were when mom and dad would be entertaining. And that hi-fi, you know, the television oh, with the cute. thing, you know. Whatever, and, and you, they put on your dad's uh, album, and they'd be like smoking cigarettes and drinking martinis and twisting, you know. Like, big, big oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, great, great memories. Great. Well, your father's such a talented guy anyway. His friggin' music is timeless. It's timeless. 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 He's timeless. I mean, and he's anybody, that doesn't, anybody that doesn't snap a finger or tap yeah. a foot to every single song of his, then they're dead. Well, I think <laughs> it's because it was that le- he took a chance, and this is something that he says when he when when uh, he would sign new artists, or you know now when we have artists, you know do your own thing. Like take a song. If you're gonna do a cover, just do it your way. Don't mm, do exactly, exactly well, like Dean Martin did. Do you p- do you play any instrument? I don't, but I have an ear for talent. So I used to. Uh, uh, work in our public my dad for my dad's publishing company mm-hmm. Rondor was Almo Sounds then Rondor and I think it went back to Almo Sounds and it was sold in 2000 to Universal Vivendi this is not the record label which was sold in 1990 and um I didn't know anything about publishing and he asked me to go work there because prior to that I was in fragrances he had a fragrance company um and uh I, I started working there in every department to learn it and I ended up working with my cousin Derek Alpert who's also the president now of Concern Foundation which is a great organization Plug for you, Derek. Um, so, hey, Derek. Um, hey, Derek. What's up, Derek? So we, uh, you know, I, I loved pitching music for film and collaborating with writers because I'm a connector. That's what I do really, really well. And I have an ear for talent. Based on him, my dad taught me to, like, when you feel it, it's probably good. But it may not be amazing. It's when the unusual ones come and I get the goosebumps. 
That's why I found mm-hmm. Brenna Whitaker was someone told me to go she see her. She played at your birthday. Yes, and that, you know someone told me to go see her at the W on a Sunday night. This was years ago when uh, Alex Quinn was doing a Sunday night cool stuff there. And um, I went to see her, and she's been playing at Vibrato ever since, and she got signed to David Foster. She sung with, you know, Barcelli. She sang at Jean and Shannon, Sim, Jean Simmons' wedding. Um, you know, so she's somebody that I was able to, we built her following. She built it, not me. She's so freaking talented, this woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's just, the she's facial expression is amazing. And we have this love for each other, because I just adore her. Last minute, asked her to come up. So she could really vacation at my wedding. I had a room that came up, and I said, "Get out, get in the car, and drive up here." And um, and I asked Is her to, if she wanted to sing <laughs> the the blonde. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, you might have. We yeah. left the the we best breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, I don't even know where I was going with that. That's fifty three. She's awesome. We're <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> talking about your your for music and in your past yeah. and what you've done and your accomplishments. And that yeah. Kind of so. Now, Sorry. I don't ask another question about your dad though, because you said you're, you're third generation. Mm-hmm. So where were your grandparents? Are did they come from? So you know that generation lies a lot, and they don't give you all the information. You right, sure. Say. Ellis so Island. From what I that, hear, I mean, she's just calling everyone. That I am. I I just, I'm so honest. To, yeah. To God. Why no, not be? I mean, why? Um, I just say what I feel. I, can't, I don't even know how to lie good. I, I get busted every time. So the <laughs> bottom line is, I'm a bad liar, so I don't lie. Yeah. But um, the bottom line is, from what I hear. I don't know the full story. I know my grandfather came over on a boat from Russia, so I know that that's part of from Yugoslavia. Yeah, I mean that's typical. And he was in the schmatza business downtown, and they they were middle class family and did very well. And my dad picked you up the trumpet at eight in school. That's I was gonna say. Did now? Do you have any aunts or uncles on your dad's side? Yeah, I have an aunt who's ninety two. She's badass. Aunt Mimi Feldman, who has a ninety eight year old boyfriend. Nice. Hi, girl Mimi Feldman. Yes, you go. And then my (laughs) uncle Dave. Who um, did used to be a drummer, and then did all my dad and Jerry's kind of property businesses, kind of oversaw everything, and um, he's actually got dementia now, so he's uh, not doing so well. But he's so sweet, and he remembered me when I saw him a few weeks ago, so that was great. Oh, that's wow. awesome! So mm-hmm. everyone's always been involved somehow. Now, Aunt Mimi is a native of LA, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, would you ask her if she'd like to come on the show sometime? And I'll tell you why. This thing yeah. is for, because I love to have all the kinds of people. But as I said, I'm fascinated, especially in a town like LA that I love, for natives who can you know talk about and I'd like you know, like when I worked in Beverly Hills, there were some folks that would like at La Scala and that sort of thing that were natives as well, mm-hmm. and they were talking about how where you know oh, the Beverly actually. Wilshire was built in the uh, '55 or whatever, but up until then it was like cow pasture. JJ, we gotta get JJ on here because she, oh, she has a clothing store. J, well, no, JJ, you know JJ. Mm-hmm. Um, African American JJ, she comes over. Cindy went to. Oh yeah, 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 she's yeah, actress, yeah. She's yeah funny. She's cool. She does the lips, and she's uh, she's got because sto- she grew up here too, man. She's got stories of working in hotels and working for the for May Company and I Magnons and please, like, back yeah, in the day. yeah. You and and Allison's going to be on. the key because Allison Martino is vintage. I just LA. I cannot she wait to meet her. I love vintage LA is the coolest, coolest, coolest. She's like a plethora of information. That's what Wendy Clancy tells yeah. me. I can't wait till you meet Wendy. And she's an old soul, and she hangs out with her mom every day. I would kill my mom if I hung out with her. (laughs) I am not going to kill my mom. Her mom is so awesome. It was her birthday (laughs) Saturday, and I know I love her because she's a tourist like me. But, you know, she's just a really cool chick. Allison's just a cool chick who who was, I think, born in the wrong era sometimes, I think. Because she's so, you know, she's Mm -hmm. got that whole vintage thing down. Her whole house is vintage. The wind, and she no, no. She lives in the, she lives she, in the she, her downstairs. Her mom and her live on the, in the same right. building on and, different floors. And Wendy has been in that building since she was like fourteen. Yeah, Linda wow. um, Thompson's in there too. She's got a place, a penthouse there. When there was a there's a, this older guy that was in the television, whatever. Uh, he lived downstairs. He lives downstairs, and he, he was a I, I can't remember the gentleman's name. He's got a beautiful he and, and uh, he and Cindy, and was it you? Cindy Bell. Was it Christmas two years ago? Cindy oh, Bell, mm-hmm. we went. He wanted us to come down and see his his place. Oh yeah, yeah. And 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 he he Put goosed me. He, he, goosed, he goosed me. He went right up the butt, and I was like woohoo! And I didn't say anything. <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> no, no. he did it to me too. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. I mean, he, he did it to I'm you too. Yeah, of course. Oh my god! I love that building. <laughs> and when they have Wendy and Ken have they have two they have two apartments in the bottom that are like guest places. One it's is a great Ken, building. It's a great building. One is Ken's um man cave. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is it's I mean it's bigger and nicer than my our apartment. And um Her apartment. but but it's it's she's like you know, she's like anytime anybody from you family, friends, please. There it's a beautiful building. You wouldn't know but it's just an old building, but it's nothing 
over the top, but it's a great building, and the space is great. Like, Allison has a three-bedroom place, I think, it, and then what she's done with it is incredible, and she, she made it very, you know, vintage feel, and she's got old school everything and pictures of her dad. I mean, it's fabulous. It's All right, Miss Allison Martino, you better come on this show soon, please. <laughs> Um, and I would like you, uh, we'll have Wendy, and you'll come back. Yeah, that would be okay. uh, wonderful. Actually. Now, tell us about some of your uh, television. Sure, yeah. Um, gosh, I've done, I've really been in the reality, we like to refer to it as the unscripted world, um, really since the beginning of it, almost. You know, from, like, right after the first season of Survivor, mm -hmm. uh, right, the real, real world was happening and all that, um, I started on a show called Boot Camp, and it was for Fox. And one of the producers of Survivor... Did this shit was executive producer was for Fox, and um, so that's where I started, which was a total fluke. I mean, I uh, just some background when I first came when I was little growing up in Detroit, I would lay on the floor in the family room, like with my chin resting in my you know, the palms of my hand, watching the prices right. And I remember saying, like, if I ever get to that California, I'm gonna go to the prices right. right? <laughs> well, sure, as shit, I did. Uh, back when I lived in Pennsylvania, I worked at QVC, and we were doing a remote shoot up here with Tova Borgnine, who had a line of fraud. Oh, yeah. I used to love her fragrance. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Oh. So we were shooting something up at her house, and I had the day off. I was like a PA or something on the shoot, so I had, you know, some free time. So, and this is before pay phones, or before cell phones, rather. So mm -hmm. I found my way, before Google, any other stuff. Some so, of us remember that. Uh, yeah. 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 So somehow I found myself over to uh, CBS Television uh, City, you know, the, the lot there. Stood in line forever. I was by myself. <clears throat> and by the way, I was going to, like, I couldn't wait to, like, participate and be, like, higher or lower, da-da-da, not in a million years was I going to be on The prices Right. I mean, I had my hair up very similar like it is right now, you know, no makeup on, just some stupid outfit, but so excited. Long story short, so I get my yellow name tag that says Catherine on it. Then they send you away, and I'm like, shit, I don't even know where I am. So I had to go back. I went, at, you know where we were staying? It's at that... What was the hotel on Beverwill and Pico? It used to, the Nico, it used to be called, I think. Well, before, but it's now Mr. It's C. Mr. C. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember what it was for a while. It's changed so many times. I know. Anyway, so that's what it was back then. And then so I got there, and I had to go back to the studio if I wanted to actually be on the show. you got to go wait in line again. Yeah, and yeah. All this other stuff. And I was like, I don't even know if I can go back there, because now I probably have to go to work and all that. And I was just like, fuck this. So I went back. Waited in line again. Don't you know? I get called down on stage. No kidding. Uh, You're by yourself. By uh, myself. And I'm telling you, it looked like I went to the game show contestant school. I mean, I was shaking like this, and I was with my hands like shaking. I'm like, oh my god. And I had no friends in the audience besides those that I'd made in line, you know. And Bob Barker and Rod Roddy were still there. You know, so anyway, through all this, and by the way, once I started winning, I couldn't lose anything. I won like two cars. I won. <coughs> did you really? Craftsman tools. Did you win like the double showcase or something? No, I didn't do the double showcase, but I, That's you know, cool. spun the That's highest great. on the real thing. I told you, I, I know won. all the right people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, like, so what? You won the car in the first round? Uh, yeah, I have it on actually on VHS. So, oh, I But then we dubbed it over it. to like the time. Did you, you did have to pay the taxes on that? Yeah, but I had made like no money at the time anyway. Like, you don't have to accept all the prizes. How old were you? Like twenties, yeah, like early twenties, mm -hmm. and so I just signed off for everything, and then like yeah, again, I didn't make any money anyway. I gave like my dad wanted the tool chest, and then I gave my sister and her husband like oh. I had an outdoor jacuzzi thingy, and they Holy had a house crap. in the summer. Yeah, at the it's time I was in New cool. York in a one bedroom apartment, I couldn't, and I already had a car. <laughs> believe it or not, I had a Geo Metro, my first car. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But I won uh, a. Uh, Another something similar to a Geo, and then I also won wow. um, a, an SUV. You know, I cannot wait to see wow. this. We drop shipped the SUV to Detroit. My mom sold it in the Detroit News. You know, like one on game show, whatever. I think I got like eighteen grand for that, which is like a million dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Back then, sure. Yeah. Well, hell yeah. But anyway, so through this experience, I met um, this this woman, Dawn Stroop, who is still one of my dearest friends and has always been a mentor work wise. And we had maintained a relationship after this, and she was the casting director on this boot camp show. And she's like, I want you to come and work for me. And I'm like, I don't know how to do casting. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what do you mean? But I'd rather do something than nothing. And, you know, I'll get my ass up and try it. And then one thing led to another. And then I, I stayed with her for a long time under her wing. And then finally, I think Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, no, sorry. Real Housewives of Orange County was kind of my breakout casting director title. You know? Awesome. Um, yeah. And then it just kept going, uh, you know, on and on. And then I opened my own doors across the street from here probably four years ago or something like that and um you know so i've cast things from like i said housewives but things for like on uh 
National Geographic, there's a show called uh, Life Below Zero about off-grid people in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that show. As long as you don't have anything and... to do with Chrisley Knows Best, do you? Uh, no. Thank God! God! I'm going to retract my answer and say yes, and then see what happens. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's oh, about this is the Chrisley family. The funniest family in America that now have moved to Nashville. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's just, it's wait, wait, wait. The, the, the son just got arrested for um, meth in his car. Uh, no <laughs> shit. Oh, Welcome yeah. to Hollywood. Yeah. I know, it's in Nashville. It's not about yeah. they're gay or not. Oh, please. He's got to be. Well. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't want to keep didn't you hear this from me on the Bob Dean show? Yay. But see, mm -hmm. since I've been since I've been unemployed, because every television show that I enjoy, like like some good daytime TV when I'm getting ready for work, but anything like for I'm sorry, I'm a Modern Family junkie, et cetera, et cetera. But I've never watched anything that I didn't catch in syndication. So I'm I'm channel surfing now and catching up on a lot yeah. of what is hot right now. And I'm telling you, they're hot. I want I I love to act and that sort of thing. But but um, these sitcoms they're on TV funny, just though. Well, oh, you think so? Well, I think I just there's want to slap such a the they're like they're not. It, it's like really. Uh, well, yeah, but you think they're because and I'll tell you why. Because the, the reason they work is that they are over relatable. the top, but yeah. they're on some level relatable. relatable. Yeah. They are totally unafraid to expose their flaws. You know what I mean? And look at any and successful. The are yeah, and and that yeah, location's a big thing. Accents are great. You know, like look at like Alaska had a huge moment. It's still having it. Like bearded men. You know. Was a big thing. Hi, you guys missed I, your moment. Are you on the show? Let's bring it back. Are you the casting director, girl? <laughs> I'll send you my headshot. I actually brought her someone for a Wait, show. Wait, you know, we're about to partner with that, but then the other doctor who's in it with oh. us blew the coop. So we're in the whole thing about trying to circle around, you know, ring So we'll get Dr. Thing. Mac Moritz on yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. plastic surgeon He's here in awesome. South Carolina. We've been doing right. this for three years, probably. Yeah. No, and, and she totally to connected us. And so hopefully that's one of the projects that we have moving forward, but TBD. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's the whole gamut of stuff, whole gamut of all. And well, there's a new one that that's, they're plugging on USA, and it's about this uh, overweight blonde woman and her family the Radkeys. Have you oh, seen the promos? Oh, no, but the promos are hilarious. She does, like, the, the spoof on the Housewives Open. The only thing that I want to see is when she's uh, pitching at somebody in the school. Yeah. She's like, didn't look like you were waiting with a middle finger to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch it. You know what's funny? Is I always I cast these things, and then they go away. I never, I don't have time to watch TV. Anymore. But to answer that real quick before I forget is that I, I put up on Facebook, I said, does anybody back home know who these people are and why they're famous? Uh -huh. And everybody, my friends are like, oh, they're hilarious, blah, 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 you know, I just, and then another friend of mine, no names mentioned, but he is um, married to a very prominent Bell Mead, which is uh, Beverly, uh, Hancock Park Moorish, mm -hmm. you know, old money. Yeah. And uh, not like Brentwood, Brentwood's new money. <laughs> uh, but, um, and anyway, and he, and, and my, my friend, very good friend, who shall remain nameless, said that uh, he, he, that certain person on TV is running around with another certain kind of effect mm -hmm. going to Nashville, but I'm not going to drop any names. I can't even show. figure it out. Yay. Uh, 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 there's so much yes. scratch, surface to scratch. What? Hold on. See? This is why, and you, uh, you're, you're right across the street, so I hope that you'll pop over and join us from time to time. I absolutely be my Great. pleasure. Great, because Kathy St. George, who uh, I was, you know, you, you yeah, met, her. met her. She's a doll. You'll mm -hmm. love her. She was Miss August of 1982. Nice. And she's August just, what? Oh, well, oh Playboy. Yeah, I was going to say my birthday was in August. Cute dog, she, and she, and, yeah, and Maybelline, her dog. Mm, and um, she's she's brought other playmates on and that sort of thing. My dog's name is Molly. Maybe she'll get along with Maybelline. Absolutely. And I'll bring Luca. Oh. Bring little Luca. And I'll bring, we have eight cats right now. Oh, good Lord. But don't tell the landlord. I know. That's a lot of hairy well, we right. We've lost oh. right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. Gay man. Well, let me tell you something. You know, I only tell people I'm queer so the women think they're safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, did your uh, boyfriend break up with you? I got white Zinfandel up at my place. Come on. Maybe you can turn me around. Zinfandel or rosé? <laughs> Zinfandel. But anyway, the, but, but, uh, Foster, I've been fostering for years. That's awesome. And Ooh. we just took in three uh, six week old uh, uh, feral kittens. Mm. Yeah, and, and they, we'll only have them for a couple of weeks. But we've got five adult cats. And, uh, and that's what I do in my act about being a white man of privilege. I'm like, you don't know anything about how hard I had it growing up. Our swimming pool didn't have a diving board. And people, well, that's what I'm saying. I might have thought that maybe get a job to pay for a new convertible top. It was rough. And then I go, I go, nobody knows anything about it. I said, I, I read to the blind in the Braille Institute, and I've been fostering animals in my home for 10 years, I've got five cats in one bedroom apartment, three of whom are black. <laughs> <laughs> but the adult cats, so they all get along like they're from the same litter, so I haven't been aggressive about trying to find homes for them. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I just think it's so important to take care of pets and everything. Well, I just love them. I wish I had a bigger place to take in more. 
I love we, dogs we too. We were talking about. Um, I was looking at the Oriental short hair cats because you know they're. Have you ever looked at them? They have these amazing ears. They look like little, uh, like aliens. They have these great big ears and these very sexy, sleek faces and short hair, and they're a little bit hypoallergenic. And my daughter's really allergic, but we have a lot of rats being up in the hills now, and so I. We, but I don't want. That that you also have my own own too. Yeah. Do it, and we have indoor outdoor living, so I'm like. We'd have to lock them in a room. Every yeah, time. And that that's, you, got, you got to think about that. Because as a matter of fact, that's how I really started, incredibly, with getting into fostering. Because I had three neighbors from my building that moved up into the hills. Mm-hmm. And my well, one friend, Nicole, uh, on Beverly Glen. Okay. And, and yeah, and you just can't. I see them every night. No, the coyotes. Every night. And, and they they're starving. Are brutal. They're starving, they're starving. And they're brutal. That's why they're starving. Listen, the other I was coming down in, in West Hollywood. No, Honey, there was Chevy coyote Hills. On, on Chevy and Hills. Yeah. I saw I one on Olympic. And, and uh, I was coming down Olympic yeah. on the way up for work. They, and it was crossing over Overland. <gasps> and I'm like, is, yes, yes, right there. No, they came by like one o'clock in the morning. I saw it too one night coming home from Vibrato when I lived over there, just tooling around. And two weeks ago, I was driving around in the valley. It was just getting dark, and I literally pull, I pulled over to take a picture of a coyote who was looking at me, and I was looking at him. I felt bad for him, but and I wanted to do something on next door and say something. And I just, you know what? They're they're skinny. They're scrawny. Yeah, you can't have any outdoor push, pets no, where no. you are because I saw a whole pack of them one night on Mulholland and Beverly Glen. Oh yeah, wow. at like seven they o'clock take on a Saturday every night. night, and you can hear. Them. Oh god, no, that's the yeah. Oh. You can hear them crying and the dogs. And oh my god, I'm gonna have the packs. Oh, the when packs they, when they get something. Well, you know, it's like my friend Nicole, who now lives in in Long Beach. She and her husband Ben, and it's a funny story because they moved there because of their pets, because they need blah blah blah, and they were. She's like, I don't want to fucking move to Long Beach. I don't. And now you can't they just love it. Long Beach is really cool. Yeah, I have my family. It's really cool right now. And they have a beautiful condo that's a walking distance, everything. But the whole point of the story is when you're coming, like if you're coming from your club Mm -hmm. down the hill, the first traffic light before you really get into the Glen, um, that her house was on she and Hans had a place. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a flat gray big garage door. You mm-hmm. can't see anything but the wall of the back of the house. But, you know, you go up the stairs in the patio and it's gorgeous. But I dropped her off one night at like 4 o'clock in the morning. I picked her up at the airport. And um, there was one street light that, like, you know, like the cone. Yeah, like in the mm-hmm. And I thought it was a damn cow. It was a, oh, this a huge one. old coyote just standing in the middle oh, of the they... street. And I, it was so creepy. I'm like, mm-hmm. roll the window up. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. let me take pictures, and he kept stopping and, like, looking at me. And I, I literally pulled the car over, and I was, like, you know, trying to do it with my phone, but I didn't know if someone was behind me, so I didn't want to get in some crazy accident. But I, I pulled over because it was on one of the side streets in the valley, and, like, by Valley Vista. And he was just, he just stopped and looked at me. And I wasn't afraid. I, I, I just felt bad because it is an animal that's just trying to survive. Yeah. And, and everyone hates coyotes, I know that, but they're, we've taken over their environment. Well, exactly, and that's the whole thing about, you know, fuck, in, 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 in my neighborhood in, in uh, Bellevue, in Nashville, nice area, like, like well, I don't have a home there anymore, <laughs> but it was like uh, Thousand Oaks or uh, Glory Hills kind of yeah. thing, mm-hmm. and the coyotes were coming into that area, too, and it's all because of overbuilding, and yeah. deer and everything like Where that, they're they all, go? Exactly. Exactly. You know, you just got to, I don't let our, our little dog is only six pounds, so yeah. we have hawks and an owl, and two bunnies that live in our backyard. So uh, when we go out, he literally stops to make sure I'm walking all the way over to the grass with him. He like stops and looks at, I won't. And two hawks were flying over the other day and I saw, I was standing next to him. But when I saw this one like looking, I just went and stood over him. You know, yeah. you just gotta. Well, you have to be because those hungry. things and they, and they're, and they're in and out before yeah. you even know oh, what's yeah. happening. Yeah. Yep. It was a come Five minutes. Wow, that was fast. We gotta do this again. I know, wow. it's fun, isn't it? Yeah, I told part you. Two, part okay, two. wait. Do we have time to play just a couple of rounds of uh, Sammy Junior? What's going on tonight, real quick? Want to tell us? Oh, uh, I have the premiere of Historical Roasts over at the Landmark. Congratulations! Yay. Thank you very much. And, uh, Sammy produces uh, Historical Roasts, which um, um, Jeff Ross is going to be doing it on TV. Great. But you all have to go and see it. It, it, it. It's Mother Teresa tonight? Uh, No, no, no. It's a, yeah, the premiere of the Netflix show. Oh, the Netflix show. Congratulations to you. Yay. 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 Heard first on the Bob Bean show. Yay. Yay. Now, okay, we're going to play a couple rounds of Just Jump. And if you don't know what Just Jump is, is that Dennis is the host <laughs> just... of Just Jump. And it's Amy Vanderbilt's 1957 etiquette book. Okay. And Dennis, uh, first of all, he does the intro very quietly, got it because I love listening to it. So, and what we do is he reads some questions, and the panel tries to answer correctly. So, Dennis, please introduce. Just jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Olson, question number one. 
Does one <coughs> open one's napkin in the lap as soon as sitting down at the table, or is it proper to wait until the food is served? No. Nope. Immediately you, when you sit yeah. down. Yeah. Because I always feel guilty if I wait, if I forget. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit, you know, so I do, like, I think it's... Uh, I know, you yeah. right, right away. Yeah, right? Yeah. Excuse me, this one would know, too, right? Well, you know, I have an issue, and my husband doesn't do that. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, but... Guests wait until the hostess has taken up hers before placing their own, entirely open if they are lunch size, or in half if they are dinner napkins. Napkins are tucked in for chewing. They are never refolded. At the end of the meal, they are gathered and laid casually to the left of the place setting. So wait, we're supposed wait, to wait until the host does the... Yeah. The You're hostess? Supposed to wait. Well, back then. I hand. thought you meant just at a restaurant or anything. No, apparently whoever, that's you know... That's a whole book. Oh, that's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's we the need fun. volume two. I know. <laughs> 2000. <laughs> But wait, so the answer was you gotta wait for the host if you're gonna yeah. do their napkin, then you do yours. I never thought that. No, I guess that I guess that that would be you know if if you were invited to a restaurant. It doesn't with, signify a restaurant but or house. Yeah. Oh, I I didn't, uh, but I wouldn't have known the answer to right. that at a home either. My right. is black I always napkins. Just put it, I always I'm, just put it on my lap. Yeah. When I sit down. Oh, uh, that's part of my act. I had a mom. Do you have Tito's vodka? Do you have black napkins? I'm like the black <gasps> napkins are made of petroleum. You're not gonna leave any lint anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> question number two. I have guests who put their cigarettes out in my coffee cups. What can I do? Up, tell them not to. Leave. <laughs> Throw the coffee with the cigarettes. Go <laughs> so get a and red cigarette. That's out. awful. Get I mean, a I'm a smoker. I don't smoke heavily, but I'm a smoker. Look, I mean, this book was back when people when smoked everybody in there. Smoked. Oh, that's all they did. What, mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I want to hear this. What? Very firmly, place an ashtray within reach and say, would you mind using this, please? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a, a Christmas Eve party every year. Um, it's called the Happy Birthday Baby Jesus Cocktail Soiree, right? and it's a benefit for the animal shelter. Oh my God, uh, oh, that's we, great. we park my old Buick at the end of the driveway, and everybody brings and stops in, and it's really, and my apartment is small, but it's, the, it's a friggin' blast, is it not? As long as you have the air conditioning on, I'll be there. Well, the, the, the thing about it is, though, is, <laughs> it, is that I'm, so, I, I'm a smoker, and I was smoking, and my apartment is like this big, but there were like 70 people crammed in one Christmas Eve, and uh, this little girl comes pushing her, I see her pushing her way through, and she's like, I can't believe you're smoking inside, and I was like, first of all, <laughs> this is my party. <laughs> Okay, give me just another question. All right. <laughs> I only smoked out to piss people off. I really didn't enjoy it at all. I'm going to be a bridesmaid and have never been one before. Am I expected to buy my own dress? No. Okay. Yes. And how do I get to the church? Sober. You buy your own dress. <laughs> 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 I've learned through the year. Um, you buy your own dress. You and do. They right? I mean, I've always church. let me know. That's what I thought. Yeah, they're, they're, You're talking they're, about they're, 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 I wasn't you know, right? Yeah, make sure you get that. Uh, today's bridemaid bride nearly always buys her own clothes, but she wears what the bride selects, of course, so that all the bridesmaids may be dressed alike. Bridesmaids assemble at the home of the bride a full hour before the ceremony. They may arrive dressed or dressed after they reach the bride's home. They receive their bouquets, and the transportation is provided for them from the bride's home to the church. Yeah. Boom. That's one thing that actually still holds true today. Yeah. I think the whole thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although I only had my daughter as a bridesmaid, and I bought the dress. But that's because I didn't have any bridesmaids. Yeah, I had one. My daughter. You know, was like, well, I've been yeah. a groomsman more times than I can count. <laughs> <laughs> Before I came out of the closet, they did all my straight friends. They're all cool about it. Now they're all saying, "Oh my God, that one guy in my party is gay." No, know. you know what though? My my, I, I like I said, I've been blessed, with wonderful friends, and, and Keith, Jeff, and Dale are with the four of us were like four of my peers back in high school, and they're all three really good looking men. They have lovely families, and they're very successful. And of course, I'm the weird one. But they were the ones that were more aggravated with me that I didn't come out. Because they were like, I can't believe you couldn't trust me. And I didn't come out until I was like 28. Well, because in that generation, it wasn't. Well, exactly. But my buddies were my buddies were like, man, we you know what? It's really hurt my feelings. Like, yeah, exactly. It's and then we still do. It's funny to see the flip side <clears> of that. You know, because it's usually about like how it affects you. You don't realize, like your friends, it's like your feelings are hurt. Yeah, so they knew. Like, I'm sure they knew. Oh, I knew please. every one of my friends that came out later. I was like, I'm not show I know. My, my, my brother Greg, I love my, my brother Greg, six foot, six foot, six and a half. That's sexy. Super, super, super successful man. He's he's in Thailand right now or something like that but and we're polar opposites but we're like this and i can't it was a big deal for me to come out you know and he picked me up at the airport it was christmas eve when i came out to my folks <sighs> yes right and i do this in my acting because my mom my mom football 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 families and my mom was like you're my son i'll love you forever and i go but mom i hate football too and that's when she goes that's sacrilege what am i going to tell the neighbors i think we're out of time 
Uh, before we go, oh. can I ask a question about winning prizes on a game show? Sure. Yes. Yeah. I've always heard that when you win cars and other big items, they make you pay the taxes. Yeah, that's I what that. uh, you they do. They do. Uh, yeah. Two things. Yes, they make you pay the taxes, but and I didn't. You don't have to accept every prize. So like, if you're like you can't afford the taxes, you're just like I'm not going to take that. Mm -hmm. I at the time was so broke and so excited, I just signed everything. So yeah. So yeah, somewhere like, I paid yeah. taxes, but they were taking money out of no money. Like you know, so I never. I never. Felt and you know, I yes, forgot to do. tell you this too: is that it's, uh, you're the third person that I've a friend new friend uh -huh. but uh, uh that has been on contestant really? show on the price is right really? my friend Randall Crawford I was sitting at home with a hangover one day about six seven years ago mm -hmm. and there he was and he won a couple of motorcycles and then my friend Mike who used to live next door Mike and, and his girl yeah. and they broke up but um he made it to he didn't win anything but he made it up to contestant show that's mm -hmm. fun I mean it's just, a life changer for we me. Audition, I mean, that's one of the best moments in the oh, world. I, I can't wait to see it please really I'd love to I'll see it, it. Yeah, um, we sure. auditioned for with uh, Nikki Kemp the really gorgeous black chick that Ben Bar Wolfgang speaks uh, we all auditioned for uh, uh, Let's Make a Deal the other day. Oh, how was it? Uh, it's Stupid. like, you know, yeah, I mean, they're like, be excited. I'm like, yeah, you know. I want to do family. That, oh, yeah, well, you could. Well, well, you know, know, I mean, that would be good if you okay. had a whole We have to go. I know everyone that casts all these shows, so if you guys ever really want to do it. Listen, um, thank you all for joining episode 73 of The Bob Dean Show. Yay! Yay. Katie, I forgot to write your last name down. Um, yes. Macintosh. You got it! Katie Macintosh, Eden Alpert, thank you both, old friends, for being thank here. You. you guys are a friggin' delight. And I'm, that was and fun. Yeah, thank you. I hope fun. that, seriously, and you you pop over. We, we record on Mondays. Anytime you want to pop over, just join us. Thank right? you. And you, you too, of course, but I, I know you got to come up from the hills. <laughs> Dude, it was easy getting her out of the way for an hour for you to open the fucking door. Well, I know. <laughs> last, time, the last time was the same thing, so thank you for being so kind and patient. I love you. Uh, and don't forget to take your complimentary uh, bottle of water. I appreciate that. This one has electrolytes. I sprung for the expensive stuff. Oh, what no, is my no, tap water in this bottle? No, no, it's, it's the, the high end water. Okay, well, we do have to go. Sandy, thank you. Uh, break a leg tonight. We'll tell, please tell everybody some love. Good luck tonight. For um, sure. Thank you all for listening. Please, please, please. We are climbing, climbing, climbing on our subscriber base on iTunes, iHeartRadio uh, app, and Stitcher. And Bob is totally comic.com. Zach's been really, really busy, so he's got some shows to put up on the website. But please, Download us, subscribe to us, and ask your friends to do so so I can make some friggin' money. <laughs> Yay. Yay! Thank you guys. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thank you.